Azerbaijan and Armenia on verge of war, folks. That's what we're talking about here today. And you notice the first item I have up here. Now, this is going to be a little bit, this is not going to be a simple story, but I want to get to the, the, to the gist of it as quick as possible. Fighting erupts between Armenia, Azerbaijan, this is yes, uh, 18 killed. This is reported from yesterday. Fighting between Armenia and this is from, reported from AP. And Azerbaijani forces has erupted again over the disputed separatist region of Nagorno-Karabakh. And the territory's defense ministry said 16 soldiers and 22 civilians have been killed and more than 100 others wounded. Azerbaijan's president, meanwhile, said his military has suffered losses but gave no details. Armenia also claimed that four Azerbaijani Helicopters were shot down, and this is the major escalation here. And 33 Azerbaijani tanks and fighting vehicles were hit by artillery. Azerbaijani Defense Ministry rejected an earlier claim that two helicopters were shot down. And uh, let's take off the uh, title here. There, we don't need that up anymore. Let's get on over to what the BBC is saying here. The BBC says Armenia and Azerbaijan fight over disputed Nagorno-Karabakh. Here, uh, all right, let's see what they got here. I've got, let's see. The countries are fighting over. Okay, know that. And I don't see. And you see some of the pictures here. You see that they've got it's controlled by ethnic Armenians, right? This footage from Azerbaijan is said to show. Let's see. What are, what are you. Hmm. Destroyed Armenian military equipment. And then we have... Clashes break out between Armenia and Azerbaijan over a disputed region. Long... This is from CNN. Long simmering tensions between Armenia and Azerbaijan appear to have flared up in the contested Nagorno-Karabakh region with both sides accusing each other of attacking civilians and reports of casualties. The neighboring former Soviet republics have long been in odds over the territory which is situated within the borders of Azerbaijan and fought a war over it that finished in 1994. Despite the conflict ending with a Russian-brokered ceasefire, military skirmishes between the two sides are not uncommon. While Armenia said it was responding to missile attacks launched by its neighbor Sunday, Azerbaijan blamed Armenia for the clashes. In response to the alleged firing of projectiles by Azerbaijan, Armenian Prime Minister Nikolai Pashinyan tweeted that his country had shot down two helicopters and three OVs UAVs had destroyed three tanks. As a result of the escalating tensions, the Armenian government has decided to impose martial law and to order general mobilization, Pashinyan said. See, that's the key. That's the big thing right here. General mobilization, general mobilization. Now, this was written 4.27 p.m. Uh, that's today, Eastern Standard Time. So, as of me creating this, that's about five hours ago. This is a little bit earlier than that. Violence erupts between Armenia and Azerbaijan over a long disputed region. This is NPR. The conflict is the latest eruption of violence in a decades long dispute over the region which lies between the borders of Azerbaijan but is controlled by ethnic Armenian forces. Okay. Armenian Prime. Okay, okay, here we go. Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan said in a tweet that the aggression seemed to be pre planned and constitutes large scale provocation against regional peace and security. Recent aggression statements of Azerbaijani leadership, large scale joint military exercises with Turkey, as well as rejection of Oski Perskio monitoring requests clearly indicates this aggression was pre planned and constitutes large scale provocation against regional peace and security. And Azerbaijan's president, Ilham Aliyev, countered that the first fire, including artillery fire, was opened by Armenia, and the first victims were Azerbaijani servicemen. Officials in both Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh declared martial law right. Okay, so let's see. I've got to uh, go on to here. The UPI, Armenia, Azerbaijan, renew clashes over contested Nagorno-Karabakh region. Military tension between Armenia and Azerbaijan flared up Sunday as both sides allege on attacks on civilians in the Nagorno-Karabakh region. Armenian Prime Minister, okay, let's see if they have anything different here. Okay, pa pa Pashinyan also announced that the government decided to declare martial law amid the call conflict. I call on the personnel attached to the troops to present themselves to the district commissariats for the fatherland for victory. That's some... 
some serious, serious, uh, serious, serious rhetoric going on there. There are reports of dead and wounded among civilians and military servicemen. Extensive damage has been inflicted on many homes and civilian infrastructures. This is uh, the assistant to the president of the Republic of Azerbaijan who accused Armenia of an aggra act of aggression and the use of force. We have here uh, Fox News, Azerbaijan, Armenia fight over disputed region as tanks destroyed, helicopters shot down. And uh, they have their tweet, the tweet here, they have embedded, Azerbaijan has launched a missile and aerial attack against Artsakh. Peaceful settlements, including Stepanakert, have been attacked. Armenian side has shot down two helicopters and three UAVs. We stay strong next to our army to protect our motherland from Azeri invasion. So we don't see or we have footage of tanks heading through the Nagorno capital of Stepanak towards the front line with Azerbaijan here. <clears throat> through Nagorno Kabakh capital of Stepanak towards the front line. Okay, so they're going to go meet the challenge. Essentially, what's uh, going on there? So this is uh, quite intriguing. Let's see if we can. This there we go. Okay, so they are driving up on the way to, I guess, to the front line there. Imagine these men, these folks. You know these folks really deep down. All they really want to do is just like commerce and live. And there are people that use various forms of uh, suspicious belief. I mean, all all belief, even if even even if your belief is true, it's still somewhat suspicious. I don't know, but uh, I don't I don't want to try to invalidate any belief one way or another. I'm a Christian and I stand by my belief, but I'm not here to talk about faith one way or another because these faiths, for the most part, folks are using these faiths to uh, convince people that uh, they should be willing to, to die and to kill in the name. And they're not wrong in the circumstances largely where they are surrounded by uh, psychopaths that have their own little dreams and designs and they use whether it's the christians that they use or the now i i, I gotta say on the main i mean i don't know the story fully i, I can't really fully take a side with armenian azerbaijan i i really believe mostly what you're seeing is uh outside forces that have some interest see they've they've rippled it out now so this is this is Armenia and Azerbaijan here, and and they've they've kind of their chaos is kind of coming to an end here, just uh, across the way here in Syria. See, that's not too far away from there. You see how that is? Hop, skip, and a jump, man. I mean, not not really, but still. Oh yeah, well, sure, why not? Hop, skip, and a jump in that same you know this area. Start to settle down. Start to settle down. You know, we need some. We need some. We need some trouble. We need some trauma. We need some reason. We need some places for us to play. So what will happen is all of these nation states like America and China and Russia, and Turkey, and Israel, and numerous others will, will sell these guys, all these guys, bunches of arms. And oh, it's going to be wonderful for them. And, uh, and they get to test their toys. And they get to test their toys on real life human beings. You know, I, I don't have any... I want I want all the human beings in this land to to not have to even do this to not even have to to struggle but you see how I mean this is going to be a brutal slog there is no easy path to victory even if you take the city so what you got to take them mountains one peak at a time you see these mountains and the region that we're talking about is called Artsakh and Artsakh is a uh, Mm, right here right in the pocket of Azerbaijan and you can see that basically it's it's this area here and I'm not sure it does not show me where uh, Stefanik so if I'm going to look at where Stefanikert I'd say this is probably what we're, we're calling Stefanikert most likely seems a high contender so they're looking to take that 
so they're these guys are going out there the border with azerbaijan it's not far away and and what's you know it really is my belief that these guys these guys can possibly get along if if it wasn't for the fact that one or more and i don't know the degree to which whom is what but when you have any type of ideational constructs that that uh, demand coercively for universal adherence to your very strict moral codes based on whatever whether it's what the dnc is trying to do with sdw or what uh, i don't know if armenia does it with the christian god i don't know if azerbaijan does it with the uh the Muslim God, but all nation states, to a certain degree, all of them do to a certain degree. They 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 mili they militarize uh, whatever belief system there is, whether it's SJW or Christian or Hindu or whatever. All of it becomes militantized, militarized. Really, they become militarized, and and then you have these human beings that end up having to they're they're trapped into these very particular vehicles of power where they're in lands in which they're surrounded by people that are fundamentally like they make their living very differently on whole different structures based upon whole different belief system systems. I mean, there's real money. There's real industry tied to every belief system that becomes the state universal or the state uh, <clears throat> norm, whatever the case might be. And so when you're talking about people disputing land they, there is very I mean there is and the land itself I'm not even sure what the land offers I'm sure God help us if there's any real valuable resources in there and you have here you have people that have Armenia has ties to uh, well, to the United States it has ties to R Russia it has ties to Israel it has ties to I'll just say that there's a lot of people in the West that would be favoring Armenia. And then uh, Azerbaijan, they have ties to Iran. They have, I mean, they have ties. I'm oh, sorry, Armenia. Has, no. Azerbaijan has ties to. Uh, <clears throat> I don't want to speak on what I'm not sure of. Uh, but I know Azerbaijan definitely has ties to Turkey. So th this is a complicated situation with. Uh, like I said in my video that I did a couple of days ago in which I actually outlined that this thing was at risk, that there was a potential for a, for a war breaking out, a conflict breaking out, ironically, ironically enough. Uh, what I said is there is this is largely, I believe, this is mostly, unfortunately, just another example of small nation states that are in the vortex of, of, of world dramas and they're being manipulated into positions to have to they're the ones that end up getting bombed they're the ones armenians are dying today azerbaijanis are are dying today and i i we i i, I can't say i weep i don't want to be fake i don't weep i i, I do in, internally grieve though uh certainly i have a, a measure of grief for for what all of these folks are going through that it's, it's, I'm not talking about the leadership. Screw the leadership in all these nation states. Screw them all. Erdogan, all of them. Just the ranks and files folks. The folks that find themselves born into a circumstance. It's like, yo, what do you expect me to do, dude? Dude. Dude, what do you expect me to do? I got to survive. Now, this thing is more complicated than just than just uh, the Republic of Artsakh. For right next to that, we have then the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic. The Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic, Azerbaijan, is a landlocked enclave of the Republic of Azerbaijan. This region covers, well, with a population of 414,000. Um, this region, by the way, that we're talking about, the Artsakh, is only 150,000, just to put things in perspective. <clears throat> the region covers, okay, the... This is where it is right here on the map. It shows you down here the little part in red, the area that is now Nakhchivan became part of Safed, Iran. Okay, I don't care about all the long history. And we're just talking about Nakhchivan in the post-Soviet era. Uh, Haider Aliyev, the future president of Azerbaijan, returned to his birthplace of uh, uh, Nakhchivan in 1990 after being ousted from his position in the Politburo by Gorbachev in 87. 
Soon after returning, Aliyev was elected to the Supreme Soviet by an overwhelming majority. Aliyev subsequently resigned, and after the failed 1991 coup against Gorbachev, he called for complete independence for Azerbaijan and denounced. Okay, denounced people, and then... Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to get into some fighting. All right, Nakhchivan became a scene of conflict during the Nagorno-Karabakh War on May 40, 1992. Iranian forces shelled the region of Sadark. So the Armenians, see, the, the Armenians claimed the attack was in response. I mean, the Armenians, basically, they have to at some point. They can't be in the situation where you have somebody who fundamentally opposes your religion and your people and uh, has a, a a Muslim state religion. I don't know if yours is a Christian religion, if you're as much a threat to them as they are to you. I don't know. I don't pretend to know this. And maybe Azerbaijan is not as... Uh, uh, as uh, well, well, let's just uh, let's just keep going on here and let's just get a, a little sense here. So there's a... Uh, oh, I didn't play Azerbaijan's anthem. Here we go. All right. Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan. Oh, you glorious fatherland of the brave child. We're all together ready to give you, to give our lives for you. All right. And uh, Armenia's, I didn't play Armenia's. Oh, no, I did play Armenia's. Pretty sure. If I didn't play Armenia's, there you go. Just for sure. Our fatherland that has for centuries lived is now summoning the insides to the free, independent Armenia. Okay. Okay. And this region, Nakhchivan. Guess what? Got their own. Uh, I think, do they have their own little thing? Come on, they do, right? There we go, here we go. Oh, never mind. It's an answer by John. You know, I will all, I think that if I hear this. I think I'm going to remember that's Azerbaijan. Someday, somewhere, in some bar. I'm going to be sitting there drinking a beer by myself and somebody's going to play like that little snippet. And I'm going to say, anybody know what anthem, nation's national anthem that is? And I'm like, ah, John. And they'll be like, genius, pure genius. So this, uh, I'm not really looking so much to give you a lot as far as my opinion about what's going on so much as, uh, here we go, folks, brace yourselves. Uh, now my, well, I can give you some degree of uh, prognostications, which is this thing is going to bog down. Uh, and uh, I am pretty sure that the drones are on the way. So then we're going to start to see if they start to, if you start to see drone wars. That's my next prediction, drone wars. And then shortly after drone wars talks, and then there will be, I think ultimately Russia is going to be interested in securing this peace. I think America is going to be interested in securing this peace. And, and I think both of them are, are kind of in the mood to see Turkey kind of uh, shut the heck up already. Because whether Turkey is, 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 is the main instigator, as some people are alleging or not, it's got his finger. It, it, they've, they've, just, they've just got their fingers in every, everywhere. They have so many engagements that they're dealing with. They got issues in Cyprus. They got issues in Crete. They got issues in uh, oh man, all up and down the Aegean Sea. They got they're they're all up and down in Libya. They're 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 doing stuff. They're looking they're looking to build a, a, an Eastern Mediterranean Empire. It seems it's it's bizarre. I I mean I think that is this is why I I can't say an Erdogan. Erdogan most assuredly is is he wants to be a caliphate builder. He wants to re he wants to build an Islamic caliphate empire. And unfortunately for him, his his convenient buddies of the time, Iran, it's not so much, not so much. And then the question is, uh, who's uh, who's helping whom as far as the uh, the alleged uh, mercenaries are coming from, and how much of it is Iran a player? It's I mean, it's all a muddle. I'm telling you, folks, it is a tangled web 
of of conflicting interest, but I believe ultimately that the 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 two most important interests in this uh, arrangement, unfortunately for Armenians and Azerbaijanis, uh, would love to see that change sometime in the world where one there is no uh, hegemonic uh, superpower uh, controls or or even world power controls over smaller powers greater greater sovereignty greater real power and sovereignty for more nations and abilities to not be messed with but armenia is in a in a in a sticky wicket here they're literally looking to secure i mean this is really just this is what nation states do this is what they do throughout the ages if you look at you can almost look at geographical maps and almost figure out how nation states are going to need to expand like armenia absolutely needs to take this they need this to go away meanwhile i mean i i I mean i'm not sure what iran's interest here iran is is playing a double game where i think they may have some degree of interest in helping the armenians to some degree because of uh just just because the turks and the iranians are both competing for the same caliphate claim just that alone but uh, i mean uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure where, where the Iranians are playing into this. I need to, to research more to figure out more on this. Uh, if this th- especially if this thing is going to become a bigger deal. I'm going to have to do more research, figure more stuff out so I can uh, accurately report this. There you see the capital of uh, Azerbaijan is Baku. That's a really beautiful place to have a capital. That really is. That is a huge advantage for the most part. Especially you got a your capital, you're sitting on the sea and you're sitting on an inner sea, so there's only so many navies that you're going to have to deal with and how many nation states are going to put a lot into building like a high like big sea expensive navy that can only be used in this small uh, region. So man, that's a pretty good that's a huge advantage for Azerbaijan. I see I mean, well, one of the back, it's got, I see a lot of flat lands here, a lot of open flat lands here, but that's uh, that's a huge disadvantage to Azerbaijan were, were Armenia to take the offensive. So I imagine if they were, I would be looking up in this region right here, look to come up through here, right up. So they'd have to take uh, this place first, probably. Takali. So let's see if Takali, Takali, is reporting any that might tell you something about whether Armenia is looking to in, invade or not. I don't see anything. Okay, so no, no, I don't see anything. But this is from this is from July, eighteen months since both sides agreed to pair for populations for peace. Azerbaijani and Armenians may have sent that peace process a few years back amid renewed fighting on the front line as of Sunday, July 12th. So, yeah, okay, my prediction is that we're going to see... I think that we're going to see this get called off. I, I'm, I'm going to reel back my, my thought that there's going to be drones. There may be some small measure of drones if this thing doesn't get settled within the next two weeks. They'll get them in that quick, trust me. Because uh, if nothing else, there are so many people that are anxious to see these drones tested under various conditions. Drones tested under mountainous conditions. Oh, hell yes. I want to get my drones in there and see how they go. Do. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean... You might not think like this, but they think like this. And I think that's where I'm going to leave this. I knew this was going to be a little bit long. So uh, my prediction, again, is I think that I think that this is going to be a short conflict that is not going to ultimately uh, devolve into full frontal war. However, however... I say that with only, I, I mean, I say that leaning, leaning in that direction. I, I think that there is a chance, a possibility, a possibility that things could get out ahead of the Russians and the Americans. And it, I think it's unlikely, but it's, it's possible. Very, very, very 
Well, it's realistically possible. I'll give it to you that. So with that, I'm going to say that's it. That's that's the end of the show. My thoughts, prayers, and everything are with all the Azerbaijanis and the Armenians, especially those that are right there immediately in the line of fire and those that are got uh, family and friends that are, that are at risk right now. All of you, none of you deserve this. None of you, only your leaders deserve this ultimately. Just put all the leaders up there and leave all the poors alone. Leave us poors alone. We can figure out a way for us to coexist. You know, in America, we have a Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights enables Muslims and Christians to live side by side. This can be done. We can do this. We don't need this crap. Anyway, good night, everyone.